Welcome to China Aviation News. This is Campress. I'm Danny. At first, let's look at the news of the week. The 2013 Xinjiang Calamai Aviation Tourism Festival of China, with the theme of flight demonstrations and aircraft display, will be held at Calamai Airport from August the 16th to the 18th this year. By then, the Bai Parachute Team of Chinese Air Force will give performance. The flight demonstration activity of Swiss Britling jets will be the farewell show of this famous aerobatics team in China. Recently, the export project application of certain tactical data link system developed by AVIC CAIC was formally approved, and CAIC has thus become the only domestic company that obtains the license of exporting data link systems. It is reported that this is a breakthrough made by China in the field of aviation radio. On July the 30th, AVIC General Aircraft Corporation Limited signed an agreement with GE, becoming the first authorized service center for H80 turboprop engine in China. Under the agreement, the customer service center of AVIC General Aircraft will be able to carry out flight line maintenance check and daily engine maintenance, including disassembling and replacement of H75, H80, and H85 engines and parts. On August the 7th, Officials from Beijing Science and Technology Commission revealed that Beijing would build more perfect full industry chain of UAV on the basis of the existing more than 30 kinds of unmanned aircrafts. At present, Beijing has launched in advance a number of major scientific and technological projects for unmanned aircrafts. These projects involve industrialization support for unmanned aircraft's development of new load equipment like high-definition recorder as well as applied research and jointing of UAV in the area of civil use. AVIC XAC completed more than 100 processes of the fuselage assembling of ARJ-21-700-109 aircraft and over 70 processes of the center wing assembling of 100 aircrafts. XAC will increase production capacity through development of MA-700 aircrafts. Recently, the last step of the flap fatigue and damage tolerance test of ARJ-21-700 aircraft, the limited load static test was conducted successfully in Yanliang. In order to further release market dynamism, the Civil Aviation Authority will continue to lose permit access conditions for domestic flight routes and give greater autonomy to the airlines in the second half of 2013 until all are changed into registration rules license. At the end of July, the newly built Hunan Xiaoyang Wugang Civil Airport was approved jointly by the State Council and the Central Military Commission. As the domestic regional airport, Wugang Civil Airport can meet 25 million of passenger throughput and 500 tons of cargo and mail throughputs in 2020 with a total investment of 957 million yuan. Recently, the CCAR-147 aircraft training of the first maintenance personnel of Oriental General Aviation Company was held in the Engineering Training Center of China Civil Aviation University. The individual satisfaction of Capital Airport as to whether baggage trolleys are convenient enough once again when the first place of the world airport topping the list of ACI the third time. Recently, the 500-second long-range test of the 120-ton liquid oxygen kerosene engine developed by the Sixth Institute of China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation was once again a complete success. Now let's have a short break. Welcome back. 
at 8.40 p.m. on August the 11th, a male airport apron cleaner of Beijing Capital International Airport was struck by lightning when working at the 626 slot of the business aircraft apron. After the incident, the medical personnel of the airport started rescue on scene. Yet in vain, the man confirmed to be dead at 9.50 after more than one hour rescue. On August 9th, Boeing 747-400 aircraft carrying 319 passengers safely flew from Chongqing Jiangbei International Airport and directly to San Francisco after a short stay in Beijing. This marks the Chongqing to San Francisco International Passenger Route achieved first flight, filling in the blank that there is no passenger airline in Chongqing flying directly to North America. This is also the first time for Boeing 747 flight to enter the passenger market of Chongqing. On the early morning of August 5th, a Bell 407GX helicopter took off from Beijing Niyun Airport to carry out the mission of emergency air rescue transfer. This is the first international air rescue mission launched by Pine Valley Star General Aviation with Pine Valley Yaxiang Airlines and Beijing 999 Rescue Center. The Wooden is a 70-year-old professor of American University who, with the whole body fractured, needed to be transferred to the U.S. for in-depth treatment. On August 6th, the Y-5B B-8473 aircraft of Hubei Jingmen General Aviation Corporation Limited fell to the ground when conducting the task of aerial seating for a station in Danfeng, Shanxi. The aircraft was severely deformed and damaged, with altogether two people of whom the plane captain was slightly injured and the co-pilot was killed. The Northwest Civil Aviation has begun investigations. The initiative of unlimited takeoff has to some extent deprived the airlines and airports of the excuse for flight delays caused by limited takeoff and forced the ground crew to make efforts to reduce human factors for flight delays. But in fact, unlimited takeoff is expanded to eight airports this time, which may help control the order of busy airports but has little effect on the curbing of flight delays. Unlimited takeoff needs synchronous improvement of air scheduling capabilities, otherwise the ground line of waiting flights is likely to become the airline, with fuel costs increased yet late arrival of flights. Therefore, deeper reform is needed to really solve the problem of delayed flights. Firstly, all operation units from the ground to the air are required to strengthen their sense of services. Currently, most of the passengers still know nothing about the real reason and compensation mechanism for flight delays, costs for protecting rights much higher. This is equivalent to encouraging normalization of flight delays. Therefore, strengthening the sense of services should begin with strengthening of competition. Secondly, it is necessary to reduce the interference of privileged aircrafts with ordinary flights. The most important thing is to accelerate the pace of low-altitude areas opening to civil aviation. Only by appropriately open low-altitude airspace that is close to international standard can the frequency of flow control that is implemented compulsively be reduced and can the rate of flight punctuality be improved. Okay, that is all for today. Here is Campress. I'm Danny. See you next time.